Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light, and for those of you who haven't seen any of my videos before, over the past several years I've been coaching and supporting people for the police recruitment process. So um, today's video is all about the Metropolitan Police, actually indeed for other forces as well, so the likes of West Yorkshire Police and Hertfordshire Police, who are doing direct entry detective schemes. So what this is, is you can apply to join the police but you start as a detective and you keep your career going as a detective. Direct entry detective. Now it's not come without some controversy. Um, there's some serving officers who believe that you need to serve your right of passage as a police officer um, in uniform before you could even touch a detective's badge. Whereas there's others thinking uh, that actually we need the skills and attributes of others who would ordinarily not think of applying for the police um, who but quite like the idea of applying for direct entry detective, uh, we need them to come and join us and support us on our journey. Right or wrong, who knows? Um, I don't sit on the fence on this. I think it's absolutely valid that we should be attracting people from different backgrounds who have different skill sets. And certainly where we are today, so this is the lunch break of a direct entry detective seminar. Uh, where I'm coaching a group of people here in Crawley in East Sussex who are applying to the Metropolitan Police to be detectives and we're going through a variety of different exercises that are going to help them on that journey. So one of the things that most forces are doing at this moment in time as part of the assessment process to be a detective is to run a paper feed type exercise where you're going to get bombarded with a variety of different tasks and requirements and requests uh, very much like the sort of uh, email queue that you'll get when you first start every shift, whether it be a day shift, afternoon shift or night shift. And what you've got to do out of all of that is prioritise them. And prioritising things is often quite a difficult task until you start using tools like this one. So on the seminar today, um, they've all gone off for their lunch break and I've sent them off in pairs to utilise this matrix to enable them to be able to present to the board that's going to assess them um, how they've prioritised all of the things in the pact that they've been given. Now for those of you who are clients of mine already, you can access that pack in the client only Facebook group. So I've got two different Facebook groups. Uh, one is a big group for people, for everyone, it's about five and a half thousand people in it, and a smaller group which is a client only group uh, people who have paid for my online courses or seminars who get access to uh, far more detailed guidance and support. Hey, why not? They've paid for it, so why not? Um, so for those of you who are clients, if you want to see a copy of that exercise, it's in the client-only Facebook group. Uh, look under files and you'll find it there. But this video is going on YouTube, it's going on Facebook, it's there for everyone. I don't mind sharing this because I think it's a really good tool for uh, prioritising anything that you're doing. So it's called the Eisenhower Matrix, and it's uh, based on something that Dwight Eisenhower, um, a previous president of the United States said, who said that um, uh, what is important is seldom urgent, and what is urgent is seldom important. So what he's trying to say there is that all the stuff that's coming in for you to deal with, most of it is not important and it's not urgent, but it fulfills other categories. And we need to be able to look at what category, what box, that request requirement uh, for your time, for your expertise, where does it fit? And this will help you prioritize your day. So the things that are actually important and are urgent, you do them now. These are things that need doing now. But there's some things that are important, but not urgent. So if it's important, it needs doing, but it's not urgent, then you plan and schedule it. The Eisenhower Matrix, uh, in its strict sense, when you read up on it, talks about not important but urgent. And this is a requirement for your time, these are things that you need to delegate. And there's all sorts of little tricks that we're looking at today about how you manage each one of these boxes, especially this one, how you go about delegating. Um, and a lot of it is about managing relationships and uh, connecting with people. So there's a, there's a lot that we're bringing in here that's got to do with code of ethics, values, um, the way the police service works, uh, the DNA that's expected of you as a detective or police constable. Anyway, I've uh, morphed this a little bit because I th some th think that some things have degrees of importance. I don't think we can say that everything is not important, 
I think so. If some, some things are either very important, in which case it goes in this box, it's a 10, it goes in there on a scale of 0 to 10, where 0 is not that important and 10 is very important, the 10s go there. Everything between 0 and 9 needs another home. And this box here isn't just one box where everything gets thrown into. What we're looking at today, and this is going to need a lot of thrashing around, especially in the debrief, is your rationale behind what sort of number you've given it in terms of its degree of importance. Um, and then this last box here is not important and not urgent. This is the stuff that wastes your time. And it might be things of your own doing as well. You know, going on Facebook or reading something that you don't really need to read. You are the governor, you are the commander of your own time. And you waste a lot of your own time. Come on, you do, don't you? Yeah, you do. Think about the things you do every day that aren't important and they're not urgent. Well, get rid of them. When you're in the police and you've got eight hour shift, 10 hour shift, whatever it might be, uh, there's about 20 hours worth of stuff that needs doing in that eight to 10 hour shift. You can't do 20 hours worth of stuff in an eight to 10 hour shift. You can't do it properly anyway. You'll end up making mistakes, too many mistakes. So you need to determine what's not important and not urgent and have a rationale behind it. So there you go, folks. I hope you found this useful. Um, whether, I mean, some of you might be finding it useful, some of my clients who are already, already police officers. I know a lot of you follow my YouTube channel and you follow us on Facebook anyway. And you may find this particularly useful for how you manage your day now you are a serving police officer. Um, and trust me when I tell you that when you give the detailed explanation of how you've managed all of this, everything that we're going to look at in the exercise now on your uh, direct entry detective board assessment centre, uh, using this, uh, you are going to be light years ahead of the other candidates. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you are one of my clients, like I said, there's a lot more stuff in the client early group that's there to support you around the direct entry detective process. Um, the time to start thinking about planning for it is now. The time to start making mistakes is now. The time to start learning from those mistakes is now, not on the day. You need to have a plan for how you approach any assessment centre or, or any part of the recruitment process for the police. All of the stuff that you are sent that says act naturally and just be yourself, no, just no. There's no way you're going to do exceptionally well if you just act naturally and do yourself. Now some people are, have these innate skills within them or skills they can bring from other parts of their professional life or their voluntary life or their sporting life or just their life. Uh, that they can bring to the party where they will pass based on act naturally and just be yourself. But I'd suggest for the majority of us that, that doesn't apply. So it's the biggest lie the College of Policing and Forces tell you. Act naturally, just be yourself. You might get through, but I prefer the confidence of knowing that I'm going to get through because I've got a systematic approach to every one of the exercises that I'm going to be faced with. So don't leave it to chance, folks. Um, especially if you're applying for a force uh, like West Yorkshire Police, where the odds are stacked against you for direct entry detective. It's highly, highly, highly competitive. The Metropolitan Police are less so because they need bigger numbers, but for the smaller forces, it is so incredibly competitive that you really need to excel at every stage. So if you'd like to find out a little bit more about how to join the Facebook group that I've mentioned, there's a link down below. Please do not put something in the text to say, please can you add me to the Facebook group? Because so many people do that and their name is some gobbledygook on YouTube or Facebook and I have no idea who you are and I can't add you that way. The link is down below in the text, folks, so go there. Uh, I've also put a link in there to some of the courses I run and some of the seminars I run. And uh, we may see you at one of them in the future, we may not, but either way, I hope you found this useful. If you've got any ideas about future videos you'd like me to make, please do let me know. Otherwise, it's Brendan signing off from Crawley. Um, uh, they're going to be at the door in a moment, asking to get back in, so I'd better go. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.